This is James Garner, one of the most loved and respected actors in Hollywood, not only for his acting ability, but also for his personal life. He was born James Scott Bumgarner on the 7th of April, 1928, in Norman, Oklahoma. James had two older brothers, Jack and Charles. Now this is a picture taken in 1931 of James, his mother Mildred, and his two brothers. They're standing in front of gas pumps at his daddy's grocery and hardware store. Weldon, James's daddy, whom they call Bill Baumgartner, his store was located in the Denver community, just outside of Norman. Now, the location of his store is now gone because it's underwater beneath Lake Thunderbird. James Garner's family has deep roots in the founding of Oklahoma. Actually, his mother Mildred was one half Cherokee, and years later, Garner will name his movie production company Cherokee Productions in honor of his mother's Cherokee heritage. Only a few days after James's fifth birthday, his mother suddenly dies of heart disease on the 17th of April, 1933. It was a tremendous shock to everyone. Mildred Scott Bumgarner is buried at the Fairview Cemetery in Shawnee, Oklahoma. She was only 26 years old. After his mother's death, the boys were separated, living with relatives until the next year in 1934 when their dad, Bill, married Wilma Reesinger. Their nickname was Red. According to the boys, the next nine years they suffered under their stepmother's strong hand including severe beatings and verbal abuse. The boys said that she was especially mean to young James. In 1943, when James was 14, he had a heated argument with Wilma. She left, never to return. After Wilma left, their dad moved to Los Angeles and the boys stayed in Norman with family. James went to work doing odd jobs and trying to make it on his own with the help of his family. When Garner was 16, he joined the Merchant Marines. It was 1944, towards the end of the Second World War. James was discharged after a few months due to severe chronic seasickness. After leaving the Merchant Marines, Garner went to California where his dad was. He entered Hollywood High School, and while attending school, one of his teachers suggested that he try modeling. He did, but it didn't last long, and he hated it, he said, so he soon quit school and returned back to Oklahoma. He attended Norman High School, where he played sports and was popular, but not the best student. Jim once told a story about standing in front of the Woolworths in Norman with a few of his friends. He was bragging and saying that he could just walk off with that peanut machine, and they dared him to. So he picked it up, and he walked down Main Street. He said then he didn't know what to do with it, so he took it back. He said after that, everybody started calling him Slick. In the 12th grade, Jim quit school and joined the Oklahoma National Guard, and he was quickly sent to Korea. During the next 14 months, James Garner seen action. His unit was on the front lines when the Chinese came across the 38th parallel. His unit suffered 60% casualties. Jim was wounded twice and received two Purple Hearts one with an oak leaf cluster. Now this is a picture of James Garner and a Korean orphan by the name of Joko that Garner took it on himself to take care of while he was in Korea. 
In 1952, he was discharged from the military. He eventually returned to Los Angeles and went to work with his dad, laying carpet. Laying carpet was bad on his knees and painful because of his war wounds. It would affect him and grow worse the rest of his life, eventually having to have both knees replaced. Gardner once said that for pain he smoked marijuana and thought that it should be legalized and that alcohol should be illegal. As luck would have it, while he was on his way to an interview for another job trying to get away from carpet laying, he spotted a sign advertising Paul Gregory's talent agency, and he wondered if it could possibly be the same Paul Gregory he was friends with when he attended Hollywood High. It was. He said that he would have never stopped to see except a woman pulled out of the parking spot right in front of the agency. He also stated that he wouldn't have been an actor today if it hadn't have been for that woman pulling out. Gregory told Garner that he could get him a spot in a play called The Cane Mutiny Court Martial. It was starring Lloyd Nolan. Just standing there and not saying anything was better than laying carpet. He said that he had no desire to be a movie star. He just wanted a way to make a living. But Kane Mutiny led to a $150 a week contract with Warner Brothers. This led in 1955 to his first on-camera appearance on Warner Brothers' weekly TV show, Cheyenne, that starred Clint Walker. Then in August of 1956, James Garner meets Lois Clark, an aspiring TV actress. Lois said that Jim always said that they had met at an Adlai Stevens presidential rally, but it wasn't true. It was at a Sunday afternoon barbecue at a mutual friend's home in Studio City. After meeting, they went to dinner every night for two weeks straight, and then married at the Beverly Hills Courthouse. They honeymooned for two days at the Le Jolian Hotel in San Diego. Garner said he had $77 and it took every bit of it. Now this was a true Hollywood romance that lasted almost 58 years until his death. It was James Garner's only marriage and Lois had a seven-year-old daughter named Kimberly from her previous marriage. Lois said that she was a total wreck when she met Jim Garner. Her daughter Kimberly was in the hospital and at that time had polio. Within a year, Jim adopted Louise's daughter Kimberly. And two things happened to James Garner the next year in 1957. First, he was assigned to star with Marlon Brando in the movie Sayonara. And while that was being filmed, he learned that he had been picked by Warner Brother Brass to star in a new TV western called Maverick. On September the 22nd, 1957, Maverick made its debut. Jim said that Maverick made him a star, but not rich. Although the show was a major success, its star was only making 500 per week. While starring as Brett Maverick, James and Lois had a baby girl, Greta Scott Garner. They called her Gigi. And that same year, he also played in his first starring role in a movie, Darby's Rangers. James Garner was one of a few actors that was able to cross between television and movies successfully. In 1960, after three seasons on Maverick, the star asked for a raise. He thought they'd give him a raise after the show was making so much money. He said he thought surely they could not be so crazy as to turn him down. 
they were. The studio began shifting the cast around and brought in a co-star, Jack Kelly. When the writer's strike occurred in Hollywood, they laid Garner off without pay, claiming that there was no script. Garner sued and won. He showed that Warner Brothers had 15 writers they were using under the table. In court, the studio admitted that Garner was right. The court also released him from his contract. And from 1961 through 1970, he starred in some 20-something movies, including the one that he liked the best, The Americanization of Emily with Julie Andrews. Next, he did Support Your Local Sheriff with Joan Hackett. And in 1963, he co-starred in The Great Escape with his friend Steve McQueen and others. Garner said the role he played as a scrounger came easy, as that that was what he was when he was in Korea. Also in 1963, he starred with Darce Day in the movie Move Over Darling. In 1974, Garner returned to television in The Rockford Files. While his show was a success, Garner developed health problems. He did his own stunts and in the process broke bones, strained muscles, and had five knee operations once on both knees at the same time. Although he suffered depression because of the pain and said he was sick and tired of it all, ironically, he won an Emmy for Rockford in 1977. And in 1979, he separated from his wife Lois for 18 months before they reconciled in 1981. When he was asked about this years later, Jim said, 99% was pressure from Rockford. It was not us. It was me needing to get away and get my head together. And in 1980, the Rockford Files stopped all of a sudden. Jim's doctors ordered rest for his bleeding ulcers. Although Garner owned 37.5% of the Rockford Files, he suspected that the studio uh, was cheating him out of profits from syndication and foreign sales. Jim said, right is right, and he always took up for the cast or anyone that was being bullied, whether it was Universal Studios or an abusive stepmother. He never decked anyone, he said, that didn't deserve it. Jim filed suit against Universal, and it took until 1989 to reach a settlement. He stated he wasn't allowed to reveal the amount that they paid him, but that his wife, Lois, had to remind him to wipe the smile off his face. After Rockford in 1981, he starred in a series of commercials for Polaroid with actress Mariette Hartley, and in 1984, Jim's brother Charles dies. The next year in 1985, James stars with Sally Fields in Murphy's Romance. For this role, he was nominated for an Oscar. Now, after James's death in 2014, Sally Fields said, My heart is broken. There are few people on this planet that I've adored as much as I've adored James Garner. A year after Murphy's romance, Jim's dead, Bill Baumgartner dies March in 1986. He was buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Hollywood Hills, California. He was 85 years old. In 1988, James Garner was rushed to the Cedar sinai Hospital with chest pains, where he had quintuplet bypass heart surgery. Two years after his heart surgery, Garner had replacement knee surgery. And in 1994, he starred with Mel Gibson and Jodie Foster in The New Maverick. 
In 2004, at the age of 76, Garner gives one of his best performances in the movie Notebook with Gina Rollins. Garner was asked about his own love affair with his wife, Lois, one of the longest marriages in Hollywood. He said, when there's trouble and you're young, love will overcome. When you're older, mature attitudes prevail. I just let her get away with murder. When asked about the women in his life that he'd worked with, he said, I've worked with a lot of great looking actresses and I made it my business not to dislike any of them. I also made it my business not to fall in love with any of them either. And in May of 2008, when Jim was 80 years old, he suffered a severe stroke. He was cared for at home by his family. In 2011, on September the 13th, Jim's brother, Jack Garner, also an actor, dies at the age of 84. Two years later, on July the 19th, 2014, around 8 p.m., medics were called to 33 Oakmont Drive in Brentwood, the house that James and Lois Garner had lived in for 58 years. He was pronounced dead of a massive heart attack. At his request, there was no memorial service and his body was cremated. James Garner's star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame located at 6927 Hollywood Boulevard. Now this is a 10-foot statue in Norman, Oklahoma dedicated to James Garner, a true Oklahoman that often returned to his hometown where many of his relatives still live. After James Garner's death, Gigi, one of his daughters, said, My father was the only man that actually lived his life by the golden rule. He spent his life discreetly doing random acts of kindness. My dad went through his entire Hollywood career without a single scandal or blemish. James Garner was 86 years old.